Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does not really fit like completely well. So well, I was afraid it's, if it's, if it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, if, if not, uh, flip it the other way. Okay, looks good. This or, or you have I have HDMI on, on this side. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. The project does the projector do more than 1080p? Uh, no, it does. Uh, uh, what one? Maybe, you know, yeah. 1024. Oh, it's a square. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what this digital does. <laughs> and this, maybe hide this. Uh. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, it's these windows. Ras, ras. Guys, thank you for coming to the presentation. Please don't forget to leave us feedback on the official website. You can also tweet and blog about the event. We really appreciate your um, feedback.
There's also Wi-Fi. I think this works. I don't know. I'll give it a try. And, uh, I'll go back to the. We were told. No one tried it. Okay. Yeah, never made it before you. So. Okay. Okay, I think okay. so, yeah. All right, cool. I think I'm ready. Uh, Jarvanet is fine, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were not sure. <laughs> So hello everyone, we have the next presentation ready, so please welcome Ryan Jarvinen from Red Hat. Hello. Hi. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm Ryan from, the, uh, from Red Hat's OpenShift team. Um, we'll be talking about securing containers on OpenShift. Um, how many people here are using OpenShift today? Anybody? Ooh, all right, good, good. Uh, well, hopefully this has good information for you. Um, there's also a lot of links in these, this slide deck. Um, so I've made a URL to make this easier for you to follow along and uh, for take home notes, right? Uh, so bit.ly slash devconf dash container sec uh, has all the links. I'll have this URL up again at the very end of the slides. Uh, but feel free uh, to follow along on your laptop if you like. So like I said, I'm Ryan Jarvanen. Uh, I work on the OpenShift team specifically focusing on uh, Node.js development. Um, and here's the broad uh, overview of a couple concepts we'll try to cover today. Um, so I'll start with a, a general introduction to OpenShift for folks who are new to the topic, uh, new to containers and uh, new to Kubernetes as well. Uh, we'll cover uh, a brief uh, glossary of terms. I'm going to try to speed through it very quickly so we have more time for container security topics. Uh, the first real security topic we have is um, uh, creating images, um, establishing a consistency for these images from the operational side. Um, then we'll go into um, runtime security for containers. Uh, part of that is going to be um, the networking that's available to the container, um, setting up network isolation, uh, or, or at least links to how you might set up network isolation. Uh, we'll talk a bit about SE Linux, um, about uh, how OpenShift handles uh, user IDs within the container. Um, we'll talk a bit about image uh, composing multiple images together using a Kubernetes template. Um, and we'll talk about a couple, uh, briefly, some advanced topics that you will most likely want to follow up on if, if you're really interested in uh, getting security done right. So uh, to start off with the overview, uh, this is uh, a little bit Coming into all this terminology with, with Kubernetes, you may feel uh, quite lost at first. There's a lot going on. Uh, so this is why I have links, so you could come back as a, as a future reference uh, to what I have here in the, the following. So I'll start off with the, the stack. What, what are we composed of with OpenShift? Uh, OpenShift runs with a, a RHEL um, base. Uh, you can also use CentOS. Uh, one of the projects where uh, 
especially working on is um, something called, oh, did my network drop? Oh, not a good, not a good sign. Okay, reconnected. Or, or not. Ah, thank you. Old, old link in my slides. So, um, this display resolution is a little bit awkward. It'll look better on your laptop or mobile device. Maybe it looks like this on your mobile. <laughs> um, so you could learn more about uh, Project Atomic and uh, what Red Hat is doing to um, streamline uh, the OS distribution specifically for running containers. So Project Atomic is generally a stripped down version of RHEL or CentOS, uh, similar to uh, RHEL Minimal. Um, but then we add in uh, Docker and Kubernetes, uh, everything you'd need for running containers. And if you need to bring in, uh, let's say, MySQL, you bring that in as a container. Um, and we've really followed all the way down this rabbit hole. Uh, OpenShift is itself running in a container that manages your other containers. Um, so anything we add from Atomic, it's, it's uh, containers all the way up. Instead of turtles all the way down, containers all the way up. Uh, another, uh, so Docker, of course, is our primary container runtime. Uh, we also like uh, looking into CoreOS's rocket spec as a, as a way to achieve greater density within the cluster. Um, so both good topics to look into. Uh, Kubernetes is what we use for container lifecycle management. Um, this will automatically restart containers as needed um, if they crash or if uh, a node fails. Um, and of course, we've got links to uh, OpenShift itself. Um, here's some more details about OpenShift. If you want to track the project on GitHub or if you'd like to participate in the community, um, github.com slash OpenShift slash origin has a lot of great information. I'll open this up really quick. There's also a uh, releases tab here that has uh, a lot of information about what's new in this particular release, along with uh, binaries for the command line tools. Uh, so if you have a developer who wants to contact a remote OpenShift environment, or if you would like to contact your local uh, self-hosted OpenShift environment, these are the command line tools uh, that you might want to access. Okay, so terminology. Um, here's a main glossary of terms uh, that, that I'll, I'll quickly loop through. Uh, first, we have a, a node. A node is basically a host machine for our, our purposes. An image, uh, very similar to a VM image, but we're using container images instead. The main difference is with container images, uh, the host OS is going to share the kernel with the guest container. So you only have one kernel per node, uh, usually. Um, containers uh, basically is a running image. Um, a pod is a Kubernetes term. Let's skip down to his uh, image. Uh, another thing about images, uh, there's an abstraction in OpenShift called image streams. An image stream gives you a way to, uh, it fires events anytime a new image is added to your repository, and you can add automation based on these uh, image stream events that fire. That's how we automate our deployments. Um, a pod is basically one or more containers that are physically co-located. Um, Ask me more about this topic if, if needed, but I'll try to get to the security stuff right away. Service is uh, basically a software load balancer. Um, I like referring to uh, my web services as services, so um, this is a little confusing for me, but for the purposes of this talk, when I say service, uh, I'm talking about a load balancer. Uh, a route is something that uh, allows a service to be exposed externally. So if I have a uh, load balancer for my web applications, 
and another load balancer for a set of DB resources. Um, I would probably want to expose the front end, but not the back end. So I would give the front end a route uh, and leave the back end uh, for internal addressing. Uh, replication controller helps uh, really control the life cycle of these containers and guarantee that if you ask for a minimum of three to be running at all times, uh, Kubernetes will help guarantee, uh, offer some guarantees around uh, uh, the availability of, of your pods. Uh, deployment config helps uh, automate the uh, distribution of images onto nodes. Um, and our build config is related to our first security topic here, how we're going to help standardize uh, the container images that are available uh, inside your OpenShift cluster. Uh, so here's a couple of those terms linked together um, in a relational diagram. Um, the blue pieces here are core uh, Kubernetes abstractions. All of the orange pieces are um, Kubernetes objects that are, are not part of the uh, base terminology, but they're extended terms that OpenShift has added. Uh, some of these features are becoming available uh, as upstream features in Kubernetes. For example, the uh, deployment configuration is uh, being up, contributed upstream to Kubernetes. I'm not sure if it will be called deployment configuration after they merge it in. Um, we may have to rebase around whatever changes uh, that Google asked for on, on that, but uh, a lot of development that the Red Hat team is doing is really going directly into the Kubernetes project uh, to help add multi-tenancy and security features um, and advanced deployments and uh, other automations. Um, as well as securing the, the Docker runtime environment. Uh, so we have, uh, it's not just our open source, it's the community's open source, and we uh, contribute across the board to all of these projects. Uh, so builds. Um, this is a link to, oh, this is a link to the OpenShift documentation that will introduce you to uh, builds. Um, this will go into how we use a variety of build strategies. Um, you could see there's three listed here. Um, so our first build strategy is Docker build. If you have a uh, re uh, repository with a Docker file inside of it, uh, you could run Docker build locally and then push the resulting image into the OpenShift registry. You could also do this as a part of your CI suite, if you're already using Jenkins to run builds, you can have it do an extra step of running Docker build and then pushing the result into OpenShift. Um, running Docker build has some inherent security risks. Inside a Docker file, you'll see uh, things like uh, apt get install this package or yum install this other package, depending on which base OS you're, you're extending. Um, in order to carry out those actions, the, the build script needs to have root permissions in order to successfully carry out the yum install. So there's additional risk. You're, you're handing out uh, basically root access during the build lifecycle. Um, so for this reason, when OpenShift uh, updates all of their code uh, on OpenShift Online on our hosted service, um, it's quite likely that we will disable the Docker build strategy um, since we're not comfortable handing out root permission to random people from the internet, right? Uh, it's something that if you're running your own OpenShift, you can definitely have enabled. Depends on how much you trust your developers. And uh, with random, random users from the internet, we, we can't afford to trust our developers. So uh, hopefully with our... Uh, with our base, of, our base assumption of don't trust anybody, we can prove that uh, whether you trust your developers or not, you should be able to do things safely. Um, so a safer build strategy, uh, or a, an alternate build strategy is, is custom builds. Uh, this is another option that's available in OpenShift. 
Uh, but source to image is the main one that uh, we will have available with OpenShift Online uh, when that relaunches with Docker support. Um, so let's do a quick example. If my uh, machine holds up here, let's see, it looks like uh, page is loading. So I can go into one of my projects here and I'll click on add to project and we could show how a, uh, a typical build and deploy uh, looks. So this, for this particular example, I'm going to name the uh, service uh, or, or the, the thing I'm deploying, I'll name it dub dub dub. Um, and I'm gonna deploy some code that I have from GitHub. Uh, this is a Node.js project. Um, so when you're running your build, if you're onboarding new users, it can really be this simple. Type in a repository, name it, and hit create, right? Very simple to get started. If you wanna see some of the advanced options, we could start a, a, someone on a dev branch or a particular feature, or even enter a, a commit hash in here if we wanna build something specific. Um, so very easy to customize this. Here's the uh, route that we'll be exposing. Since this is a web service, I'll say, I'll leave this box selected and we'll say, yes, go ahead and expose this publicly, right? For databases, we definitely unselect this box and say, leave it behind uh, internal to the Kubernetes network. Uh, so I'll leave that selected. Um, we can also do additional automation via uh, webhooks from GitHub, GitHub Enterprise, Bitbucket, a uh, variety of revision control systems that have webhook support. And that webhook will fire in, uh, trigger a new build, and possibly a new deploy uh, based on your deployment config. Um, and in each stage of your release pipeline, you'd have a different deployment config uh, that might encapsulate any differences between uh, your dev environment, your, your staging environment. Um, you may wanna do uh, high availability in, in uh, production, but maybe not for casual developers. So you can uh, encode all of that, uh, some of those details in, uh, in the deployment config and the, the templates per stage. Uh, so I'll leave this on auto deploy anytime a new image is available. And you could also see that I'm going to automatically rebuild anytime the operations team updates the base image that I depend on. Uh, on the previous page, I selected a Node.js uh, base, which already includes RHEL, and Node.js is uh, maintained by the operations team. And so anytime uh, there's an exploit, let's say uh, shell shock or heart bleed, one of these issues comes up, uh, you shouldn't have your Node.js developers be responsible for closing that bug and uh, saying, oh, hey, we think we have it fixed. You know, you, you want to have uh, someone from your operations team who's responsible for standardizing the base images across your uh, enterprise. And um, this allows you to automatically rebuild any of the application containers when it's a uh, base image dependency has a change to it. So if, if the ops team pushes an update that closes that heart bleed uh, bug or shell shock, we'll rebuild the application container as well automatically. We could also inject a couple environment variables here. Here's an easy way to, uh, let's say you had a database uh, that was outside of your OpenShift cluster. You could give it a reference um, via an environment variable and allow your application to then uh, contact uh, a MongoDB at a specific URL or, or something like that. Um, so I'll hit create. That's basically what I wanted to cover. We could watch this build uh, as it happens. Uh, this should be streaming logs as the build uh, processes. This will be, since Docker is a layered uh, file system, we have the base image and now this is uh, running a build, adding more layers on top. Uh, once that build is complete, we'll upload the application image back into our internal registry. 
and then deploy it uh, across uh, the nodes in our cluster. Let's see if I could get back to overview. Should be able to catch the deploy here as soon as that push to the registry is done, we should automatically see, since I selected auto deploy, it should show up right, right here. We'll check back on it in a minute. Uh, securing builds. Um, there's more documentation on this topic. Uh, if, if you want to dig in deeper, um, here's another good link in our uh, OpenShift docs. Uh, also, since we're submitting this image into our internal OpenShift registry, if we want to have an external service, a Jenkins or something else like that, uh, interact with our uh, with our, with our uh, Docker registry, uh, we have some notes on how to set secrets um, and, and secure that registry. Uh, another good topic uh, that the Red Hat team has been uh, actively developing or, or has contributed to is uh, Notary. Um, this is a feature for Docker that helps uh, with image signing so that you know um, Internal to the registry, I have a certain uh, checksum or a certain hash, a SHA value that, that I can identify this image. Um, we want to know when we download the image that we can check the signature and verify that no code has changed um, in transit, that I got the image that I asked for, right? So notary goes into that topic. Uh, here's a, a link for more information. Ooh. My build, my build didn't work, unfortunately. I, I should have kept the tab hidden. Um, let's see. I'll rebuild and see if it recovers. Um, OK, runtime security. Um, so now that we have, uh, theoretically, now we have an OpenShift container up and running, um, let's see what we can do, uh, now that we have an image built and we're ready to deploy, let's see what we can do to help uh, secure the runtime environment. Uh, we actually have uh, one of our Red Hat engineers who, who works specifically on the networking backplane is uh, Rajat Chopra. He has a talk at, uh, I believe, 4 o'clock um, called Networking in a Container World. So if you want to know a lot more about how to guarantee network isolation um, or how the, the internal software-defined networking works for the cluster. Um, this is a good, good talk to look into. Um, there's also videos on our software-defined networking model um, and some notes on how to set up uh, SSL or TSL certificates um, with the route that's established into your container. Uh, so these are good notes on uh, network security. Um, this one particularly, the software-defined networking um, portion. Let's see if I can find. We have a topological diagram that should have a link right about here, and I think uh, this display resolution is not going to allow me to show it. Browse here on the left. Browse, it's, it, that's yeah, that's not it. It should, yeah, it should be, where? I can't, I am not sure where you're pointing. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, 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 thank you. All right, so here we can see a, a couple objects that have been deployed. This represents the route um, or the, the host name for my application. This works similarly to Apache virtual hosts. Um, so anytime we have incoming traffic with a certain host header uh, that matches the name of this route, we'll then pass that along to the service or the load balancer, uh, which will then pass this into the containers uh, that will be part of a scaled set. So let me uh, scale up the... Uh, Looks like the second build completed and was able to successfully deploy. So here's our dub 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 service. Um, and I can then scale this up to four containers. We should see those containers coming online. This 
And we should see similar information on this diagram as these containers come online. And OpenShift provides a uh, flat networking space across each of these containers. So if I click on each one, we'll see more information in the right-hand pane. And I could see the IP address of each of these containers. So we'll have a flat networking space within this particular project. There's a variety of project scopes here. Um, but these pods can communicate directly uh, IP to IP if needed. Um, ideally, you'll communicate via the service or the load balancer in order to spread traffic across your pods. Um, and if you want to add additional um, networking isolation, you, we have a feature you can enable on our uh, open vSwitch network, um, which basically does a, a private VXLAN per project. That would prevent you from communicating um, across projects. So it depends on um, how you want to architect your solution. Whether that's needed or not depends on, uh, you know, Depends on your, the way you deploy your code. Um, but we do have additional support for network isolation per, per project uh, using a private VXLAN. Uh, SE Linux is an important topic. Uh, how many of you are familiar with SE Linux? How, how many have it running on your laptop? All right, good, good for you. OK. <laughs> so. Um, I'm using Fedora on my laptop, and it, it's pretty solid. Um, I think Red Hat has a lot of experience with this topic in particular. Uh, there's been some pain over the years, but it's uh, working pretty well now. Uh, and this is one of the tools we use to help lock down these container environments and create a security context. Um, Dan Walsh had a talk, I believe, earlier in the day or somewhere on the schedule. He can go into more detail on this topic uh, if you like. Um, but we basically create a uh, security context that's bound to a specific user scope. And what we try to do is run every container with a random user ID. Um, what this helps is uh, if we have a SE Linux policy for user number 2030, uh, and we start up two containers with the same user ID, there's a potential risk that someone could break out of one container across to the other container with the same user ID. So we assign random user IDs to the containers to help uh, accommodate for this uh, potential risk. Uh, so here, if you want to see more about uh, uh, inside the container, here's um, we use this must run as range. And we have a range of UIDs. Uh, and we'll select one, uh, feed it into the container. Uh, so when you're building containers, uh, whether it's via, via the source to image, this should work automatically. But if you're building images externally to OpenShift, um, make sure you don't run as user. That's the primary thing to remember. Never allow the container to run as user, or run as root, right? You don't want your containers running as root. Um, and they should allow uh, random UIDs to be assigned uh, if you really want them to work well with OpenShift Online. Um, OC is our command line tool. If you run OC get SCC, you should see a, uh, my terminal is not available. OC get SCC should give me a list of uh, some of the security contexts that have been uh, set up across my OpenShift cluster. Next topic we'll go into is uh, composition. Now that we have one service, one web service running, I shouldn't say the word service. Now that we have, yeah, you know what I mean, one web service, one application that I've deployed, um, we may want to add a database. We may want to have um, multiple services that compose a, uh, a multiple microservices that compose a larger application. Um, so you can help compose multiple containers together using uh, uh, templates, uh, and then configure these images to talk to each other 
or to be aware of each other using environment variables. Uh, so if I wanted to set an environment variable, I guess first I'm going to go into one of the containers we have here. Uh, this isn't the one I deployed. Here's a container we deployed. I should be able to check the logs and get a live terminal. I could see that inside this container, um, process ID one, um, hmm. well, if I could scroll here, process ID one is actually NPM. So I'm clearly inside a container. It's not a init script or, or something like that. And here's a random user ID that I've been assigned inside the container. Uh, also, I set a uh, generic key value, right? So if I grep for key, oops. Here's the key and value, the generic key and value that I configured during our uh, build phase. So this could be a connection string to a, a database or, or something else that, that my application needs to be aware of. If I wanted to set a new environment variable, I can update the deployment config or the build config um, using a command like this. Uh, and this will go update the Kubernetes uh, configuration file um, and automatically redeploy my containers with the new uh, configuration. Templates. This is one of my favorite topics. Um, I almost think that uh, these would be better named as a maybe installers. This really encompasses everything uh, that your application is comprised of. Uh, so let's look at an example here. I've got a project on uh, GitHub that includes a template. So this project uses um, Node.js um, with a RESTify uh, framework. Um, it uses MongoDB as the backend environment, and on the client side, it uses leaflet.js. Um, so I have a file in here we could look at. Uh, here's the template file that I'll be deploying. Um, so there's a couple things that are unique to templates. Um, they all have a, a template name. Um, you can set an icon in here uh, and then make this template uh, easy to install to developers. If I install this template in OpenShift, I'll get a, uh, a one-click launcher in the web interface. So I'll install this and we'll, we'll see what it looks like after I install. Um, a template will also include a list of uh, Kubernetes objects that will then be posted to the API as the template is processed. Um, part of the processing for the template is to substitute in variables. Uh, so you'll have a parameterized uh, injection of config into the template. We'll see an example of what this looks like as well. Uh, so this is, uh, this is generally what uh, some of the data might look like uh, that's being fed into Kubernetes. Here's our deployment config object uh, that's going to get a, a particular database service name. Um, it has a list of uh, triggers or change events, so anytime the image changes, we'll deploy. Um, we could set a default number of replicas here um, and set up ports and environment variables that will be used. So for this MongoDB environment, We'll be injecting a uh, MongoDB user, a password, a database name, and, and a couple other details. We'll also inject the exact same configuration into our front-end environment. 
the, the Node.js web server. Uh, that should be, here's the, the front end environment. We're passing in the same credentials. So let's see if I can uh, spin up this application really quickly. Actually, I'm going to, uh, I think I'll flip through the rest of these slides and then close with, with the demo. Uh, couple other topics. Other things you might add into a template. If your application requires a persistent volume or any kind of disk, um, your containers are meant to be stateless, easily destroyed, easily recreated. Um, so uh, if, you, if you need storage in the template, you can uh, identify a volume or a persistency, uh, persistent volume claim, um, and then basically detail that in the template, make it available to your application. Um, other advanced topics that you're going to want to look into for security is uh, there's something called secrets. If you wanted a, uh, let's say, your SSL configuration, um, I'm not going to publish all of that via an environment variable. Uh, what I'll do instead is create something called a secret. Uh, that secret will then be mounted as a file uh, into my container. So that's how I would put in things like a S SSL config or, or other details um, that might need to be injected into a container. Um, service accounts are a way to uh, delegate authorization into a cluster. Uh, so this is another good topic to, to follow up on. And finally, uh, if you want to validate your containers or do security auditing, um, this open SCAP project um, will help validate and uh, review the container content, check for vulnerabilities, and uh, possibly reject a deploy um, if it doesn't pass the test, right? Uh, so there's a couple ways to try OpenShift. You could sign up for OpenShift Enterprise. We also have a, a hosted environment called OpenShift Dedicated. Um, please feel free to sign up for either of these environments. If you're just interested in the upstream code, I showed you the origin releases earlier. Um, we also have an all-in-one VM. If you'd like to run the whole cluster locally, just with Vagrant up, um, this openshift.org slash VM has a VirtualBox file, uh, or VirtualBox image and a Vagrant file. Uh, also, if you'd like to deploy a large cluster, uh, the OpenShift Ansible repo has playbooks for deploying OpenShift to uh, Amazon, to Google Compute, uh, to raw, raw machines, if you have raw machines, anywhere you like. Um, Ansible is our deployment tool uh, for large environments. Uh, the environment that I am using today, I set up using this particular uh, Ansible playbook, this one command, and uh, one command, 20 minutes later, I had a cluster of 10 machines. So um, it should be very easy to set up. Uh, feel, free, feel free to file bugs or issues if, uh, if you run into any problems along in the process. Uh, more great links for you. Um, if you'd like some free ebooks, uh, courtesy of Red Hat, we've got an ebook on Kubernetes, an ebook on Docker security, um, and uh, more great documentation online, official training courses from Red Hat, uh, and uh, more information. So if I have a, a minute left, I will risk um, running this project. And let's see if I can do a quick deploy here. So I am in the demo project. Switch to demo. I'll run. Uh, I'll run OC create on our template file. This will install the template locally into the project that I'm using. Now when I run add to project, I should be able to find on this page a parks see all. Should be a project here with my parks application. Mm.
Uh, anyway, uh, parks should show up as a one-click, uh, kind of like this, with a Node.js MongoDB example. I'll click on this, because this will have a, a similar example here. We can substitute the repository URL. Um, we can add in uh, the database user, database password, and database name. The result that we'll end up with has the front end and the back end fully configured. Uh, it will end up looking, uh, let's see if I have a backup. Yeah, I don't have a backup of it. But if you'd like to see this demo in the Red Hat booth just outside the door, I'd be happy to show you out there. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs>
Hi, Pep. So where is the where is the open? A one one three, which I don't know where it is. A. What is this? This is B. This is C. I think I know where A is. This is enough. Okay, if something is here. You're coming tomorrow as well, right? Yeah. Bye, Pep. Just a reminder, um, please, if you like the sessions or you don't like them, which I hope won't happen, leave some feedback on our official website. Please also tweet and blog uh, about the events. We have a competition for the best blog post, so you can win some prizes. Um, basically, that's it. Thank you very much. First time here? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You're having fun. <laughs> I am, yeah. This is really cool. <coughs> Sorry? What's this monitor to? Um, I think we can actually switch them here. Oh, it doesn't matter. You can do that. I don't know. I don't I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Hello. Uh, sorry? I'm, so, I'm searching an organizer. For Jan Bleha, you mean? Um, no. Um, David? Uh, David? David Kaspar? Some, someone with for te from the technical team? Nobody here. Does this have a timer on it? Because I don't know. Never mind, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> But don't worry, we'll time you, oh and yeah. we'll be showing signs when it's 10 minutes left, 5 minutes left, and yeah, yeah, no I mean minutes left. Kind of no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just playing. Okay. All right. <laughs> So uh, we have the next presentation ready. Uh, please welcome Ryan Hellisi. Thank you. Oop, can we hear you? Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jay. Um, so hi, uh, my name is Ryan Hellisi. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, I've been at Red Hat for about a year and a half now. Um, and uh, my specific focus uh, at Red Hat has been uh, around OpenStack. Uh, I've been working on OpenStack for that entire time. Uh, specifically, been working on containers for about a year now. Um, the 
container technology really has become a hit within OpenStack, and it's something that's really been growing. Uh, there's been some projects around it, and it's really started to take off and be successful. Um, so today, I'm going to cover uh, a